There are a number of new views in the Events Calendar and Events Calendar Pro 3.0, and I wanted to walk through some of those in this screencast. Keep in mind before we go much further that I am running both the Core and the Pro release here, so some of the views and functionality you see are going to be limited to Pro users. I'm on my demo site, I got the 3.0 codebase active, and one of the first things you're going to see when you come to this events page is this bar across the top. This is a new addition for 3.0, we call it the events bar, and it's meant to help you modify the query that dictates what appears in the main calendar down below. Let's check out this main calendar. Right now, we're on month view as we've determined via this drop down over here. And it looks pretty similar to the month view that exists in the current 2.0x release. You have the title up top showing events in the current month. All the events appear in a basic grid, and if you hover over one, you see a tooltip come up that it shows the featured image, some details, and a bit of a description. Clicking into an actual individual event comes to our recently redesigned event layout page, where you see all the details, the organizer, the venue, related events, and anything else pertinent. And as is the case in the current 2.x releases, you can go forward or back a month, you can import into iCal, etc. Where the events bar comes into play, is it allows you to change the certain details here. Let's say you want to see all events in a different month, in the future or in the past. Let's say you want to narrow down to show, say, just events that reference WordPress. You type WordPress into this search box. Let's say you want to see all events near your current location. I'm in Oakland, California. I don't care about things taking place outside of California. So if I type Oakland into the near field, it'll help narrow that down as well. You can use any of these, you can use all of them, or you can use none of them. It's up to you. They're there to help you, but they're not required. Let's check over on one of our other views. Now you'll notice list view, month view, and day view all existed in some capacity in the 2.x releases. Week view, map view, and photo view are new. Let's go check out list view. Again, even though list view currently exists in the 2.x releases, it's been modified a bit. You'll notice off the bat the event bar does integrate with it, allows you to select what date to start displaying. Whatever you select here will be the starting point on the upcoming events list over here has these month dividers so you have a better picture of where in the broader scheme of time you are. There are also year dividers so once we get over to 2014 you'll see one of those as well. And then the events just list in their regular fashion. Title, time, venue, description. One thing that's worth noting and that's a new feature here is for recurring events you'll see this little recurring event icon and when you hover over it it shows the criteria of that recurrence. In this case every week until May 11th, 2013. Again, you can toggle forward or back and you can import into iCal here. Let's change to the last of our existing but modified views, day view. Day view is pretty basic, just shows all the events taking place on a given day. And if there are no events on that day, it's going to tell you as much. If you go to a day that does show events, it'll order them by when they start, it'll have a nice little graphic indicator of when they are starting, and it'll again show title, time, venue, description with the option to click into the full details if you wish. You can go next or previous, and again, you can import into iCal. Now we're going into new terrain. We're going to check out views that we have not released in any build yet, starting with week view. Week view, once again, integrates with the events bar, which is a constant, and it shows all the events taking place during a fixed seven day period. All day events appear up top, fixed hour range events appear down below, and you can bring up the tooltip on hover, click into the event to see the full details. Toggle forward or back, import into iCal, use the events bar to pick the week you want to start, any, any way you wish, if you want to show your events in a week format, this is for you. Let's go check out something different, Map View, which, as you might expect, shows all the events transposed onto a map. Now here this map is in the St. Paul region, St. Paul, Minnesota, because the vast majority of our events take place in or around St. Paul. Since this is a Google Map, I can treat it as a Google Map, zoom in or out, drop the Street View Man, whatever I want. And if I want to see the future events, I have the option to scroll forward to Next Events. Finally, we have our photo view. Now this is going to be meant for those of you who are really using featured images because you'll see it makes nice use of the photos. Ones that don't have featured images will display as well, they just look kind of bland. It shows them in kind of a poster board layout, makes good use of the space, and again, gives you the option to click into the event if you wish. It also shows the category, so you can narrow down by category here if you want to. And again, toggle forward or back with next and previous links. One last aspect that I haven't covered here that I want to touch on briefly 
You'll notice we had this show advanced filters over in the sidebar and I had it intentionally hidden, but if I enable it, it brings up these extra filters. The filters panel is going to be a separate plugin. It's not going to come bundled with core or pro. It'll be an add on, but it'll allow you the greater option to filter beyond what the events bar up top does. It has the option to filter by category, by cost, by tag. And then I have a few more that I've hidden and do not have enabled on the front end, including distance, time, day, organizer, and venue. You can hide these, hide as many of them as you want, or you can enable them all, it's totally up to you. Likewise, you can hide and enable specific views as you see fit. If you only want your users to have access to month and week view, so be it. As long as at least one is active, you're all good. Hope this helps, hope this gave a nice high level overview of the different views. We're stoked to get this out there and I'm going to be putting out specific screencasts focusing more on these given views over the coming weeks. Thanks for checking it out and thanks for checking out the events calendar 3.0.